Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 10 of MKT 340 Strategic Marketing Management where I'm talking about radical innovation strategies. These are new to the world products and services but they're also new to the world business models. A very nice quote from Mark Bienoff, uh, CEO of Salesforce which are a large e-commerce company in, in America. My job is to build a culture of innovation. That's something we have to try and enforce. We encourage it, we value it, we notice it, we compensate it for it, we require it. So the idea here is that innovation doesn't come from uh, top management, it comes from the entire company. So we're looking at uh, the final part of our strategy development and implementation stage, which are radical innovation strategies in the subject. So the focus of this lecture today so radical innovation, so that's doing something new to the world, new to the market, product line, process or business model that is significantly different from the product current offerings. And we, we define this to a business unit recognising that some companies may have a number of business units or strategic business units that operate in different markets. Um, specific focus is how the radical innovation differs from other three product growth options that we've looked at, the process involved in the creation of radical types of innovation strategies, strategies of going first, being a market pioneer or a market follower can pursue in order to gain a competitive advantage or a new form in an existing market. Okay, so what do we mean by radical innovation? Well, we, we can mean uh, the following, new to the world innovations in breakthrough innovations, new products or services, transform transformational innovations such as uh, smartphones, uh, we'll look at one today, the, Go, the, the GoPro uh, camera, or we talk about Blue Ocean or brand new innovations. So for example, here we'll look at Aldi, uh, Virgin, uh, the Virgin Business Empire is very much based on value innovations. Then we've got uh, new to the firm innovations where um, the firm follows or improves on an innovation that's already out there. So Samsung mobile phones in response to uh, the Apple phones are a good example of that. Uh, the idea here is shown here in the new concept development model, which, is, which takes us away from just new product in innovation, but actually looking at new value or new business innovations here. And the idea here is very similar to what we've seen uh, in to a transformational uh, model or a new product development model here. So what then are some of these, the advantages for being first in developing a new business model or a new product or service? Well, there's obviously the advantage of technological leadership. We can get a good reputation and position for a market segment. People who provide it, who buy our services like the iPhone can get used to that, that system and so you can get built-in switching costs. You get economies of scale and what we call experience curve effects, being able to market, uh, sell, produce things at a much cheaper cost, uh, just because you've got good at it over time, sort of inbuilt learning effects. And then of course you can build up very good value chain strategies and all these things can create customer, superior customer value. So just in terms of customer value here, to create, communicate, deliver superior and sustainable customer value compared to that of our competitors. So the brand positioning and segmentation strategies here uh, for being first, you can see here is that you can often establish the primary demand. Uh, you can develop the rules of the game of what is an acceptable innovation in this area and so you can keep changing market expectations for the product category in terms of its outdoor product attributes and benefits. And Apple does this very much so with its design and user uh, friendliness of its products. The advantages of technological leadership are shown here. Uh, firstly, there is patent protection. This is going first where possible. And of course, the advances in the product innovation and learning curve effects that I've talked about earlier. But there's also value chain strategies which lead on from this. We can tie up sources of supply. So for example, in, in iPhones, there are rare metals that are used in iPhones. So being first in that smart uh, phone industry means you can tie up fairly scarce sources of um, rare, rare metals that are used in that. You can shape the way the product is distributed uh, by um, tying up distribution channels 
or um, being a product which people want to distribute for you. And you can establish very close relationships or strategic alliances with distribution partners. So Apple, of course, is a very good distribution arrangements in Australia with uh, mobile phone providers such as Optus and Telstra. You can, of course, then build in switching costs. So switching costs are not just financial costs, but just the costs of learning a new system, um, psychic costs, effort costs, um, yeah. And these can also impose long-term buyer supply and we can shape the way the product is distributed. Economies of scale and experience, you can see here, you can get volumes of, of economies of scale, pretty much which I suppose the Tels, the Tels, Tesla is trying to do with its um, electrical cars and also network effects established in industry standard operating systems. So ISO 2 or the Windows operating system are good examples of that. Now, of course, this doesn't always go according to plan. GoPro is recalling its first drone just 16 days after it went on sale due to some of the quadcopters losing power. A GoPro representative provided no further details on the power failure, such as whether or not it was losing power mid-flight. GoPro says it sold about 2,500 of the Karma drones. In the recall announcement, the company said no injuries or property damage was reported due to these defective models. GoPro is not replacing the units, just offering refunds. But the company does plan to keep making the drones once they fix the problem. Anyone who owns a Karma can get a refund by returning it to GoPro or to the place they bought it from. Details are on the GoPro website. The $800 Karma drone was designed for the GoPro camera, but it was simple to use with a handheld controller that had a flip-up touchscreen. And the drone was very portable and could be folded up into a backpack. And in case you are wondering about power loss, sophisticated drones like the Karma are designed to not simply fall out of the sky when they lose power. They're generally programmed to land themselves when power is low, first giving off a warning when the battery is running out. I'm Bridget Carey. You can stay on top of the biggest tech stories at CNET.com slash update. Okay, so that was um, the GoPro here. Now, the, of course, this was, came out in November of, of uh, 2016, late last year. And, of course, the, the rush to beta market meant that there were technical issues here. But you can see how the GoPro was trying to redefine the market standard of portability and usability of this product. Okay. So one of the, what's some of the strategies of the new of being a market follower then? Well, the potential of a market pioneer is to increase or to create a almost another first mover advantage due to um, an inadequate resources being deployed, failure to build volume and achieve economies of scale. This is pretty much what what happened with Betamax versus versus the VHS standard. Ineffective targeting or positioning. Failure to take up technological improvements. So success often bleed, breeds a sense of inertia and um, that may, may, may not make these companies as willing to provide the technological improvements needed to keep up with the marketplace. Poor quality or lack of sort of attributes, you saw that with the Karma drone there, that might create an opportunity for co com competitors. And finally, customer value creation mixed problems such as overpricing, distribution problems and so on. So as potential strategies for a market follower then, I'd capitalise on mistakes made by the pioneer. Let them develop the market for you. A larger scale and achieve great economies of scale. Now this is a challenge that Tesla will face with electrical cars now that other companies like Mercedes, Toyota and so on are entering the market. They have already a great economies of scale in Tesla and so they may be able to create the um, differential advantage. They could leapfrog and improve how the, come up with a new generation product with superior product, a better value proposition, so uh, Virgin does this very much with its airlines, commercial services and so on, superior product quality, uh, some argue that Samsung's quality is superior to that of the Apple phone and that's, that's created an advantage for them, vastly superior cu customer service as well. Now we can see this in Aldi's approach in retailing. And this is really explained in here. Now, Aldi's approach is based on value, 
and it's based on having a smaller number of items, but those which are more well sought after by the customer. Dad, I want to look at this. Tomato and basil, crushed tomato and basil. Mm, diced tomato and basil, crushed tomato and fresh basil. Whole tomato and basil, Italian tomato and basil, basil tomato and basil. Puree tomato. Dad! Oh, where have you been? Don't waste your life in the sauce aisle. Unlike other supermarkets, Aldi only stocks the best, so you save time and money. That's good different. Okay, if we click on the website here, uh, we can see that Aldi has a number of different approaches that uh, you, can, you can do. Well, I won't look at it now, but it really is the price value approach limited, limiting their, um, their range uh, as well. Okay. More self-service again, um, there are some other advantages there as well. That's it for now. See textbook for, on, on online topics for more information. I hope you found this lecture informative. Bye.